All right, welcome to another episode of Jeff Smith's Garage. This time it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to do something on engine combinations. Over the next, you know, several episodes, we're going to do several different engine combinations. But we start with the LS motors because they're hot right now. Everybody wants to talk about LS motors. So over the years, we've run hundreds and hundreds of dyno tests on all kinds of different motors. And, and within those, I've picked out three or four or five that I really liked. And, and they're not necessarily really high horsepower combinations. In fact, what they really are, are good street motor combinations where the engine will actually idle decently. You don't have to fight the thing all the time. The plugs don't load up, even if it's carbureted or fuel injected, it doesn't matter. So I thought what we do is go over some of this stuff and, and uh, give you a uh, introduction on uh, this particular package, which was a six liter. Now in the interest of full disclosure, this is actually a 4853 block, but we're using it as our example here to show you what we've done. But the engine in question was actually a very used six liter and uh, we'll, we'll run through those details for you. So let's start with a short block and we'll go, we'll kind of work our way up to the top of the motor. So what we started with with that particular test was a used six liter LQ4 engine. Uh, they generally run about nine and a half to one compression ratio, uh, big open, there's still a cathedral board head and uh, engine. So this was a used engine. I, I don't know where it came from. I don't know its history, but it was a used motor. We didn't do anything except clean it, put it back together. I actually put new bearings in it, but that's not gonna affect the power at all. And then what we did was over a series of tests, we ended up with one particular camshaft that's kind of an interim camshaft. This is a you know, comp 219-227 camshaft. We'll give you the part numbers of all these pieces uh, at the end of the video so you don't have to try and struggle to write stuff down. So we ran through the cylinder head thing kind of quickly, so let's run backwards a little bit and kind of give you a little refresher course on LS cylinder heads. The early Gen 3 engines, the 485357 6 liter motors, all used a cathedral port head, which is this version here. Uh, and they call them cathedral ports because the top of the port has this kind of peak to it, and it looks a little bit like a church steeple. This is where the injector squirts down through, that's why it's shaped that particular way. And these were uh, in various port volumes and combustion chamber volumes. The trick on our engine was to take the cylinder heads the six liter heads off and put the 5.3 heads on because the 5.3 uses a much smaller chamber. Even if you just swapped the heads and didn't port them like we did, uh, it's still worth 4% power on 400 horsepower. That's that's 16 horsepower. So it's, it's definitely worth the power even if you don't touch them. But then if you go in like Richard Raymond did with West Coast cylinder heads and pocket port them a little bit, mainly the work is all done inside next to the valve seat. Uh, that's worth an, another 10 or 15 horsepower, easy. So, um, cathedral ports. Now, in the rec ports came later with the Gen 4 engines, and they opened the port up. And this is rec port cylinder head. This particular set is an L99 ported set from GM from a few years ago. But um, a lot of people think, well, this is the only head you should use. But we never even tried the rec ports on our little 6 liter because we were looking for torque. And what happens is when you go to a much larger intake port, um, you, uh, you lose velocity. And for a street motor, you really want velocity. You want the air coming, charging into this intake port to the seat of the valve as, as fast as possible because it fills the cylinder better. So really for a mild street engine, uh, cathedral port heads are a much better way to go. And there's lots of aftermarket heads as well. We just did this one particular test that worked very, very well. It was somewhat affordable. So now we'll get into, um, we'll talk a little bit about intake manifolds. So now what we've got is the 219 camshaft and the ported 5.3 heads. Then we went with a, uh, eventually we ended up with this manifold, which is the Trailblazer SS intake manifold. And again, the, this you can buy this brand new and it's, it's fairly affordable too. I forget the price, but you can get it through Summit. And... Um, and it's just the stock Trailblazer intake manifold. The benefit of this manifold, yes, it's big, it's ugly, it's nasty looking, and it's somewhat tall, um, but this manifold makes more torque than the old six liter truck manifold and will make more horsepower than the LS6, the low profile LS6 manifold. So that's why we decided to choose this package. So what we came up with um, in the in, in combination was uh, 
496 horsepower, and I think around 485 or 490 foot pounds of torque. We'll run, we'll show you the curve and all the numbers at the end of the video. But I was really impressed. This thing idled at like 16 inches of manifold vacuum, almost like a stalker, and generated that much torque. I mean, it was way over 400 foot pounds of torque from a six liter, even at like 3,000 RPM. So it's a great street package. There are a number of upgrades that you can do, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But um, I really like this package. This, this is this would be a great street motor package. As an example, the to, as a comparison. The factory 454 HO big block Chevy makes more torque than this by about 10 or 15 foot pounds, but doesn't make as much horsepower. And that's a rat motor that weighs, uh, I don't know, what, 150, 200 pounds heavier than this thing with aluminum heads on it. So if you think about it, for power to weight, that's a fantastic combination. So I really like this particular package. And then what we'll do here in a second is we'll get into some uh, other camshafts and possibly other intake manifolds that will make even more power. All right, so let's talk a little bit about intake manifolds. This is to kind of round this whole package out. Um, we mentioned the uh, Trailblazer SS intake manifold. This is a GM factory manifold that was used on uh, 2010, 20, whatever the year was. Trailblazer SS, you can buy it straight, brand new from, from uh, Summit, and it's really affordable. So that's why we chose it for that particular package. But it's still a truck manifold, and it is kind of tall, uh, and it's also cathedral port. Um, if you can't run this height, you're going to lose a little bit of torque and a little bit of peak horsepower, but you go to like an LS2 manifold, that's what this is, uh, lower profile will fit under any, any hood line, even fourth gen Camaros and stuff, that's, you know, that's what they were used for. So uh, that package is much better, but unfortunately doesn't quite make the torque or the horsepower that this does. So then um, if you really want to make some serious power, and again, these are all cathedral port uh, intake manifolds. This uh, fast LSXR, we eventually ran this manifold on the 6 liter engine with a slightly bigger camshaft, 227 at 50 comp cam, and this motor, this thing made, uh, made 550. So that combination, a little bit better solar heads, I think we ended up with, trail, uh, with TFS heads on that particular package and it made 550 with really good power. So uh, this is a lot more expensive manifold, obviously the aftermarket piece, it's really good manifold. It's the best cathedral port manifold out there if you want to make a peak power, uh, but it, you know, you pay for it. So, but the combinations are, the only one we don't have on here is the stock truck manifold, which is about this same height as this one um, that was used on the early six liter, six liter engines. But um, it, it uh, doesn't make as much power as this manifold, and with the affordability of this manifold, uh, it's really the way to go. Plus, this is a four-bolt throttle body style. You don't necessarily have to run 102. We just ran it because we had it. Um, you could run a stock four-bolt uh, throttle body, and I don't think it would affect the power at all. So, altogether, you've got lots of options here if you wanted to change a few things. So let's talk a little bit about camshafts because really it's an integrated package with you look at cylinder heads, camshaft, intake manifold, that's what makes the power. Um, you can change certain things, camshafts really easy thing to change, make more power, but it's a trade-off. So anytime you go to a bigger camshaft, you're going to lose a little bit of low speed torque, you're going to gain some peak power. But for that's why this 219 at 50 cam that I, that I talked about earlier is such a nice piece because it idles really nicely. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. So 219 at 50 means 219 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths tap and lift. That's the way you really want to compare camshafts of even different manufacturers because they all use that same spec, whereas their advertised duration numbers will vary. So it's just easier to do it that way. So uh, this particular camshaft, uh, the comp cam, again, we'll give you the part numbers at the end of this thing, um, worked really, really well. If you wanted to go a little bit better, Comp has come up with uh, something called the low shock technology. It's brand new technology introduced, I think, last year, uh, 2019, um, where they've redesigned the lobe. And you, we did a test, which we'll, we'll do a separate video on later because it's really interesting stuff. But just with the specs exactly the same, but yet with low shock technology versus the old style where they essentially slam the valve open, uh, we picked up over 10 horsepower, I think it was almost 15 horsepower on a 400 cubic inch LS motor. 
Um, and yet you look at the specs, the specs almost looked identical. So it's the shape of the lobe that helps. So in this particular case, they actually have an LST camshaft. It is a um, stage one LST cam. It's actually for a turbo. But I looked at the specs and it's 223, 225 at 50, a little bit less lift than the cam that we're running in this particular thing with a 115 lobe separation angle, wider lobe separation angle, actually improves the idle stability a little bit, but they do it for the turbo package. I think that cam would work really well with a uh, even normally aspirated like this and add maybe another 10, 12 horsepower. So um, it's just an option, something you th can think about, but um, uh, I'm gonna talk to Comp about maybe some other uh, uh, normally aspirated applications that would work. They have some other LST cams that will also work, but uh, overall, if you want to stick with that 219 cam and the specs will be at the end, on the part numbers, um, that would work really, really well, and you know it'll work because with this package, even if you don't do the ported heads, thing will still make probably 480, 475, 480. That's really good power from a from a six liter, a used six liter. Um, if you were to build a six liter with a with good rings to seal it up, it would make even more power. So that's it for the combination, and uh, we'll catch you next time.